Sorry about that. <clears throat> well, the ants go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one. The little one stops to suck his thumb. And they all go marching down in the ground. that song? Well, that song is about an insect. An ant is an insect. Shall we go on with our insect stories today? I'm glad to see you. This is Alma Lynn, and we're going to be reading more about insects. We're almost done with our insect book, and today we're going to talk about harmful insects. Let's have a look. This situated here. Okay, can you see that? Many insects are harmful in other ways. And besides, remember they talked about the um, termites and how they eat. They can just make a house fall down. They can just eat it from the inside out. Well, there's other things that insects do that are not helpful to us. They are hungry, and sometimes they eat up the things that we want to eat too, or we need. They eat vegetables by the carloads, and some insects eat other, only a few kinds of vegetables, and some eat almost any kind of vegetables. Here are pictures of harmful insects and the food that they eat. Insects like fruit too. They eat apples and peaches and pears and plums and many other kinds of fruit. The worm in an apple is really a caterpillar of a moth. Now we know all about those, don't we? The moth lays its eggs on the apple and the egg hatches into a caterpillar. And the caterpillar begins to eat the apple. Hundreds and hundreds of bushels of apples are spoiled every year by insects. Do you know what this other thing is that's being eaten? Yes, do you like corn on the cob? Would you want to bite into your corn on the cob and find a worm? I don't think so. Farmers have to work very hard to keep these bugs out of their crops. Here's some other ideas. Look at those. Many other kinds of caterpillars spoil fruits and vegetables. Some live in the ears of corn. Some live on the heads of cabbage. Some eat roots. Some eat leaves. Some eat stems. That kills the whole plant, doesn't it, or the roots? Millions of dollars are spent every year to keep insects from eating the things that we need. Insects will even eat your clothes. Did you know they like to eat the wool in your clothes? Yeah. They ate Tom's bathing suit. There was not a hole in it when he put it away last fall after he sw the swimming season, but moths found his suit. He didn't put it away right and protect it, and they almost ate it up. He can never wear it again. Moths eat woolen blankets, woolen rugs, caps, coats, and even pants. They eat all things made out of wool, and every year moths eat millions of dollars worth of clothes if they're not protected or put away correctly. Let's talk a little bit about what we've learned about insects. Let's see, what is this? This is about what they look on the outside. All the insects have how many legs? Six, that's right. Some insects have wings, some don't. There are more kinds of insects in the world than any kind of animal. Did you know that? More kinds. When a moth grows, it changes from an egg to a caterpillar, and then to a cocoon, and then to a moth. When a butterfly grows, it changes from an egg to a caterpillar, then to a, no, chrysalis. See that word? And then to a butterfly. Some insects help us. 
some insects harm us. And did you know that scales cover the wings of butterflies? Yeah, look at that. Scales cover the wings of moths. See? Isn't that interesting? Well, I hope you've enjoyed that today. I had a friend who showed me a beautiful um, picture of a moth that landed on his <clears throat> on his um, garage door. It was really spectacular, and I'm going to try to find that picture and share it with you later. Maybe I'll have it next time. So you guys have a good day. And oh, I forgot, we could have our Bible story. Let's uh, do that and see where we are. Let's see, we talked about Peter last time. And this is another story about Peter, I almost forgot. Remember Peter became very bold and started preaching? Well, he did more than preach boldly. He did some miracles. I should say God did some miracles through him. Peter and John have come to God's house to pray. A man is sitting there who can't walk. Something is the matter with his legs. He was that way when he was a tiny baby. He'd never been able to walk. Can you see how his legs are all bent up? That is why he's sitting near God's house asking people to give him money to buy food because in those days there wasn't any place people like that could go and get help. Now today we do. In fact, your mothers or your parents may work for an organization that helps people. But then there weren't too many places like that. When he sees Peter and John, he asks them, please give me some money. Peter says, I don't have any money but he could give him something else that was a lot better. He said, get up and walk. Peter will, Jesus will make you well. In the picture, you can see the man beginning to get up. Look, his legs are starting to work. Even the muscles are suddenly strong and able to work. He not only got up, he walked, he ran, and he was giving thanks to God would you be running around giving thanks to God if you'd never been able to walk? Now this man can get a job and he can take care of himself and maybe even a family. Isn't that wonderful? Wasn't God good to do that? And now more people will hear about Jesus because of this man. They will pay attention now. Here's some questions. Could this man walk before Peter talked to him? No. Where is Jesus right now? Remember, Jesus has gone back to heaven. But remember who he sent? The Holy Spirit, God's very own spirit. And that spirit is at work here, helping Peter pray for people. Did Jesus help Peter make this man walk again? Or walk? Yes, he did. And this story comes from Acts 3, 1 through 11. And you know, I have one more song, I guess, today because I forgot that I was going to teach you a little song if you haven't already learned it about this very story. Let's see if I can figure out what key it's in. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Can you do that with me? Let's sing what Peter said. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. And when we get to the part about walking and leaping, if you're not already in bed, maybe you could walk and leap and wave your hands above your head just like that man did. Ready? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I think there's a little more to that song. If you want to look it up on the internet, that's the part I remember. But that's a good song to remember today about how powerful God is and how helpful the Holy Spirit is and how we need all of God. We need everything that he has for us because there will be days when people will have needs even greater than this man did. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit in us so that God can use us to meet the needs that we make happen in your very lifetime. I love you. Good night.